Jerry? Are you sure that's the tune for Rockahoola Baby? People would be dropping in all week. I don't want to find we're displaying the French national anthem. No, it's, it's just decoration. Well, have a semi quaver, make your own tune. <laughs> um, Joyce, don't be disappointed if nobody comes. Of course they'll come. I've sent out at home invitations. There's a new crowd out there, Harry. Bright young things, new Winchester. I want to draw them round me. Well, bye. Cars are already breaking down all over Hampshire. Yeah, the ones you've repaired are. <laughs> It's embarrassing enough living with my brother at my age. I might at least have a social life. We women can't just go to pubs like you, you know, unless we want to attract the wrong kind of attention. Which we do, of course, sometimes. God, I need some glamour. I'm not really a dicker. <laughs> Gentlemen, I have an extremely important announcement to make. As you know, I have just attended the AA's annual road management conference to deliver my speech, tongues away, on the move with Esperanto. I trust it received the rapture it so richly deserved, sir. No, sadly, it was inadvertently left out of the running order due to an administrative error. Be that as it may, as you know, one of the main topics at the conference was the salute. To salute or not to salute? That was the question. What was the answer? That we should salute when stationary but not when on the move. Oh, no. no. I'm sorry, but that's the thin end of the wedge. Yeah. We take away the salute, we'd just be mechanics on motorbikes. Yeah, we're in funny acts, eh? <laughs> so, in order to acclimatise yourselves to this imminent change, today, when you see a yellow badge approaching, I want you all to pass that member by, keeping your eyes straight ahead, and both hands glued to the handlebars. Oh, no, they won't like that. What if they complain? I have anticipated that eventuality. After this briefing, I want you all to write down on your blackboards the following message, which I composed yesterday. Your AA patrol is sorry to say he will not be saluting today. He is not ill nor gone on strike. He's just tired of falling off his bike. If in need, just give him a ring. On your way and happy motor, in. Now, moving on, conference also decided to commission a new radiator badge. The history so far. Like Darwin's famous Galapagos Finch, the AA badge has gone through several evolutions. A frying pan, the silver circle, the big bulge, legs crossed, legs rampant. Thank you, Mr. Mons. And now, true to the history of the AA welcoming initiatives from the ranks, it has announced an open competition and is inviting you all to submit designs. Oh, an excellent idea. What do we get? Yes, it is exciting. So please let me have any submissions by the end of the week for my adjudication. But what do we get? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mons. Finally, consumption of elastoplast has tripled since Miss Heesman was put in charge of the first aid cabinet. So, from now on, only cuts measuring three quarters of an inch or over will be eligible for elastoplast. It's not oh, Mr. Spenner, oh, that's oh, not. Oh, yes, all right, all right. Why is it that you alone among my patrols should dream of such a scheme? I'm possibly more ingrained in the older ways than the others. Well, don't be. Your motorcycle will take a week to repair and we have no spare machines. How do you propose to mend members' vehicles? Stand by the side of the road and hope that they break down near you? Oh, and by the way, Joyce says, will you bring home a large bag of peanuts? 
While your motorcycle is being repaired, you can use the Central Auxiliary Response Vehicle. Thanks. The what? The van. And if you get so much as a scratch on it, I shall kick you out of the service. I mean it. Catherine. Do you ever feel that you were born to live in gentler times? Mm. Steer, look on the bright side. You can't fall off a van. I think it should be pink. What? Harry, the new AA batch. Oh. Look at the decade. The 1930s were brown, the 1940s were khaki, the 1950s were grey. I think the 1960s should be pink. Not if I've got anything to do with them. This is a motoring organisation, not a bathroom suite manufacturer. The has always been yellow. Yellow and brown, the colours of... Oh, bananas. <laughs> I mean, look at the RAC, eh? The gaudy populism of blue. <laughs> Oh, it's pretty, really, yeah. Oh, man! That's going so many. Uh, Gilbert, recognise this one, boys, driving storm anywhere. Ah, oh, there you are. Morning, Sir Gilbert. Is it? Oh, indeed it is, Sir Gilbert. And a very fine one, if I may make so bold. So, uh, very, very bold. What are you blathering on about? Can we be of uh, any assistance? Yes, as a matter of fact, you can. I seem to run out of the essential zing. Do you have any? Oh, certainly, Sir Gilbert. Uh, I think one of my colleagues has some in his sidecar. Uh, Mr. Munz, uh, fetch that spare can at once. As the, uh, the song goes, Sir Gilbert, zing with the springs in your cart, eh? And, uh, how's Lady Gilbert? How the hell should I know? Oh, my sentiments exactly. I have no idea how Mrs. Bannerman is either. Ah, oh, thank you. If you'll, uh, just give me the key to the petrol lock, I'll, uh, pour it in for you, sir. Are you going raving mad? I don't want petrol. I want something for this. Oh. Oh. Tonic water. Ah, uh, I'm afraid we tend not to carry tonic water, sir. Right fluid. Don't suppose you'd know the difference. There really should be a proper law against drinking and driving. Yeah, when you've been doing this job for as long as I have, Robin, you'll, you'll come to realise there is a class of men out there on the nation's highways for whom the frequent intake of alcohol is not only a birthright, but a duty. Not serious. Well, if Winston Churchill could run the country after a bottle of brandy for breakfast, Surely someone of Sir Gilbert's standing can tootle up the A31 with a couple of pink gins inside him without the nation's traffic grinding to a halt? Yeah, but if that had been my dad driving like that, they'd have hauled him up in front of the beak. Well, they can't do that with Sir Gilbert. He is the beak. Maybe the roads are impassable. That'll be a freak snowstorm, will it? Dense clouds of killer insects. I'm sure when word gets out that you're holding soirees, all manner of people will start dropping in. Sophisticated types, discussing nuclear war one minute, playing spin the bottle the next. Yeah, well, thanks for your support. So Harry on shift this evening, is he? Yes. Good. Good. He damaged his motorcycle, so he's got the central auxiliary response vehicle. What? The van. I had to tell him any more mishaps and he's out of the service. Why are you on such a short fuse these days? I'm not. Leonard, no! Why? We don't seem to have any physical contact these days. Yeah, well, I've gone off it. And you promised me you know, seeing anyone else? not. Let's try your homemade wine. <laughs> what is it again? Dandelion and whortleberry. What's that floating on top? No, oh, that'll be a whortleberry. So, no grapes in it then? You can make wine out of practically anything. Prunes, pomegranates, potatoes. Then why don't they? What? 
Well, why don't the French, say, make wine out of potatoes instead of grapes? Laziness. You don't think it's because wine made out of grapes tastes like wine, whereas wine made out of potatoes tastes less like wine? Just think, Joyce. Our very own wine, and for less than sixpence a gallon. We want to be well stocked. It's no good having an open house if all you've got on offer is half a bottle of Cypress Shadow. Mm. You like red, don't you? Normally. the worst driving I've seen him. Oh. I didn't see you coming, jumping out like that. You should put your lights on. With all due respect, Sir Gilbert, I did. Plus, a large illuminated sign on the roof. Where? There. Oh, the sign. Well, that's why I couldn't see you. I was completely dazzled. How's my bodywork? Not a scratch. That's why I bought her, built like a tank. Right then, I'll be off. Oh, I'm sorry, Sir Gilbert, but we'll need to take this further. Oh, don't worry about that. I won't press charges. You seem a little uh, tired, Sir Gilbert. Oh, yes, very tired. Probably because I've been drinking all evening. And you don't think that's a little irresponsible? Look, I'm already in trouble for crashing my motorcycle. If the AA think this is my fault, I may well lose my job. Yeah, uh, terrible business. Still, we'd better keep quiet about it, you know. Wouldn't do in my position, etc., etc. Get it repaired. I'll pay the bill. Nobody need be the wiser. All right. Maybe I should drive you home. No, no, I'm nearly at my... What do you call it? House, I think. Look. I hate it when that happens. Uh, a front near side wing for a 1959 Ford Anglia van. Yeah, oh, extremely urgent. N no, I'd, I'd rather pick it up from the station. Yeah, I'm an experienced AA patrol, so I'll bolting it on myself. Uh, welding it on, yes. Uh, did I say bolting? Oh, yes, I'm very familiar with the old welding. Look, I'll have to talk to you later. Bye. Oh, hello, Leonard. Morning, Harry. Anything wrong? No, no, no. Uh, I just forgot to make a phone call before I left the house this morning. Really? Who to? Um, church. Church, yes. I suddenly felt that I ought to go to church and uh, I wanted to check what the sermon was in case I'd uh, heard it before. So, are you taking good care of the Central Auxiliary Response Vehicle? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yes, I thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd drive to the church um, along the, um, along the, the pretty route here. Yeah. And cut down through to Blackgate Village. Then after the service, maybe Maybe shoot up to here. Yeah, past the um, disused mine works. Right, I'll see you back at headquarters. Right, you are. So, what have you got? Well, I've gone for something that will show the friendlier side of the AA and appeal especially for ladies and children. <clears throat> I'm not sure I'd feel comfortable saluting that. No. Roy? Well. <clears throat> um, Mr. Bannerman? Oh, well, <clears throat> I still have many friends in the engineering business, so, um, 